So let's make an attempt at finding delay in a complex CMOS gate, because this is the first step in figuring out how to size and design gates. First of all, let's consider a very simple case where we have a, a complex logic gate performing the function f equals a plus bc all bar. And this is loaded by a, uh, an inverter. So we have a CMOS inverter loading it at the output. So this inverter is just load, right? And we want to find out delay at this output node. So this is the output where we want to find delay. Uh, every transistor in this case is sized to be a minimum sized transistor so that their W uh, over L is uh, equal to 1. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume that CGN note is equal to CGP note is equal to CG note. CDN note is equal to CDP note is equal to CD note. And um, that RN note is equal to R note. And naturally, RP note is going to be 2 R note because the resistance of PMOS is double that of NMOS. The question now is what is the delay at node out? So delay is naturally going to be 0.69 times the time constant. Uh, time constant consists of the capacitance at the output node and the resistance that is charging or discharging this capacitance. The problem with delay for the output node out is that the resistance charging or discharging the capacitance is going to depend on the input combination we use. For example, if uh, the path through A and BC is active, then these two paths provide a different resistance from the case where only the path A, uh, a is active or only the case uh, or the case where only the path BC is active. So resistance is a little bit complicated. Capacitance, on the other hand, CL at the output node is simpler to calculate because capacitance will always be the same regardless of if we are calculating TP high to low or TP low to high and regardless of the input value we are considering. So it's best to first consider uh, the value of CL at the output node. And so CL will consist of two components. The first component is the gate capacitance we see from the, from the following stage. The following stage has two transistors, one, CMOS, one PMOS and one NMOS. And so the loading capacitance will be uh, CG uh, note plus CG note. It's equal, this is equal to two CG notes. So that's the uh, external loading that comes from the next stage. Now there's also self-loading from the current stage. And so at the output node we look and we find that we see three transistors. Uh, two NMOS transistors, A and B, and a single PMOS transistor, uh, transistor A. And therefore, um, we can calculate the uh, self-loading as three CD node, uh, two coming from the PDN and uh, one coming from the pull-up network. And so loading capacitance is two CG node plus three CD node, right? Uh, the gate component is external loading. The drain component is self-loading or intrinsic loading. Now, when we want to calculate delay, we always ask um, for which input uh, value are we ca calculating delay, for which input combination are we are calculating delay. Let's assume somebody tells us that we want to calculate delay for the input 1, 0, 0. So for the input 1, 0, 0, um, the branch A is active. Branch A is active in the pull-down network means that the output will be pulled down to 0. So the final state from this is that F will be zero. F at this output node will be zero. And so we are calculating TP high low. We're calculating high to low delay because the branch that is active is active in the pull down network. The path that we provide is a path to ground and therefore this is a high to low delay. Now, what is the resistance of this uh, pull down uh, path that is available for this uh, input combination? It is basically the path through transistor A. That's it. So from output to ground is through transistor A. Transistor A has a size uh, W over L equals 1, which means that its resistance is R0 over 1. And therefore, the time constant in this case, uh, tau high low, is going to be R0 into 2CG0 plus 3D CD0. So let's consider another input combo combination. So ABC is equal to uh, 0, 1, 1. Again, F is going to settle at 0 in this case, but it's going to settle at 0 through the path A and B, right? Uh, sorry, B and C. So the, through the path B and C. And therefore, each of these transistors is sized at 1, which means that the equivalent 
W over L is equal to half. And therefore, the resistance in this case is going to be R0 over half, which is 2 R0. And the capacitance is still the same, because capacitance is always the same for all input cases. So the time constant for this input combination is longer. It's, uh, it's, it's bigger than the time constant in the first input combination, which makes sense. Because if we have to discharge through the path containing B and C, this is a path with a higher resistance than the path containing only A, because it has two series transistors, so two series resistors. And so we expect that since we are discharging the same capacitance through a higher resistance, we will see a larger time constant. What is the best case TP high low? We always see the best case TP high low when we have all ones input. All ones input will always give us an F equal to zero, and it will always activate the most number of branches in the pull down network. This ensures that we see the least amount of resistance in the pull down network, or that we observe the most amount of current in the pull down network. Both cases, that means the least amount of delay. And so uh, when we look at the pull down network in this case, it consists of the transistor A with a, an aspect ratio of 1, B and C in series with each other, which is an aspect ratio of 0.5. And I'm representing them now as resistors, which is uh, just something that helps in finding the equivalent W over L. So the equivalent W over L for the entire network will be 1.5. 0.5 coming from B and C series with each other, and 1.5 is the result of adding this 0.5 to the 1 of transistor A. And therefore, the tau P high low, the time constant for high to low delay in this case, will be R0 divided one by 1.5 into 2CG0 plus 3CD0. There's not going to be a better um, high to low delay than this one, because the all ones case is always going to give us the best case for high to low delay. Now let's look at uh, low to high delay. And let's, for example, consider the input case ABC uh, equal to 0, 0, 1. So 0, 0, 1 means that we are considering a case where F will settle at 1 at the end. So we are definitely looking at TP low high. Notice that I'm considering time constants in this case, because I just don't want to deal with the 0.69. But time constants and delays are, always, are, are almost the same. So the path that we have available to charge up the capacitor is now through transistors uh, B and A. And each of them has a size of 1, right? So uh, this is equivalent to a single PMOS transistor whose size is 0.5. And so uh, the resistance in this case is um, 2 or not divided by 0.5. And pay special attention to this too, because the resistance of a size 1 PMOS is not R0, it is 2 R0. And therefore, we divide 2 R0 by the equivalent aspect ratio of the PMOS, not R0 by the equivalent aspect ratio of the PMOS. And the loading capacitance is still 2 CG0 plus 3 CD0, because loading capacitance does not change based on the input case. Now, uh, if we have ABC, is equal to 0, 1, 0. This will give us the same, the exact same result because we have very we have symmetry in the pull-up network. A in series with C will give us an, an equivalent aspect ratio of 0.5, which gives us the exact same resistance. On the other hand, the best case delay for the pull-up network, the best case TP low high, is always going to happen with all zeros input. Because all zeros input guarantees that we have the maximum number of branches available in the pull-up network to supply. This reduces the resistance in the pull-up network or maximizes the current in the pull-up network. Both are saying the same thing. So if we look at the pull-up network with B and C in power with each other, each sized at 1, and then in series with A, this means that we have 2 in series with 1, which gives us a single trans transistor with an aspect ratio of 2 over 3. And therefore, the delay, tau p low high, is going to be 2 r naught over 2 third times 2 cg naught plus 3 cd naught. So this is the best case, low to high delay. You cannot see a low to high delay that is better than this. This kind of sizing, where each transistor is sized at an aspect ratio of 1, will give us the minimum area for both gates. However, this is not helpful sizing. On the one hand, it uh, gives us very different de uh, delay values for the low to high delay and the high to low delay. On the other hand, it also means that we have different cases 
in the same network. For example, if branch BC is active, it gives us a different delay from the case where branch A is active. In the next video, we'll look at a more systematic way to uh, size transistors so that we get good results out of them.